Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so uh, let us bow and uh, begin the presentation with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the opportunity to share the messages that you've been giving us concerning chronology, an understanding which shows your hand throughout this here or history. We see an order coming from what to many of man's perspective is um, of chaos, of complicated histories, but we're seeing that as the hand was upon the wheels within wheels, that you are bringing everything to order and on to, uh, to a beautiful harmony. And Father, we are living very near the end of this year world's history. And Father, we, uh, we know there is a time of trial before us. And uh, we give thanks that we have this here time to prepare. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us in this here presentation. And may it be a blessing to those who are watching this here study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this is the 11th uh, presentation that I'm doing on a Bible-based chronological study with a focus on the book of Judges. And uh, this will be the last one. Previously I began concerning the chronology of chronologies, saying that there's been previous chronologies such as Usher and Mother and so forth that has brought a lot of truths to our understanding. But in the, in the last 10 years or so, that there has uh, just been more refined and a lot more light has come about. Um, we talked about Ezekiel, that in chapter 1 we have there the four beasts that are representing the constellations and God is over above these here angels, or these called these here beasts, and controlling the affairs of man. Okay, true, oh, Jennifer. Bye. So um, then we talked about the ceasing of the manna, and we talked about the 300 years periods that we get in Judges and an Elamite statement concerning the ark being at Shiloh. We established 1533 BC as the date of the Exodus and uh, presented the evidence for that. We looked at Joshua, Phineas, Eleazar, that sort of history around them, the beginning of the Judges. We moved on to Samuel and the Philistines. We talked about the number 666. I've just shown you uh, some, some uh, connections with that date in history. And then we looked at Ezekiel's temple vision. And my understanding is the altar of that their vision has connections to that to a 666 year period, although it's not quite um, brought out. If you add up the, the areas of the base of the of that uh, altar, uh, you can, it comes to uh, sort of 664 which is really, really close to 666. And um, so in this year presentation, I'll be sort of touching just a wee bit more on that there, just to finishing that off. And then I have like an overview and just going through the, the history of God's dealing with years and spans of times and uh, from creation right to this year time. So we had uh, looked at this year older, and this is like a, 
looking down on it from above. And just there's some uh, numbers here that we can maybe look at. Uh, this is the other part here, which was by 12 by 12, so you have the number 144. Or it's, uh, it's 12 cubits in length, which is 25 or 252 inches. And the next section is 14 by 14, and then that was called the greater settle, and then there's a lower settle or ledge, which is uh, 16 by 16. And then we have what's called the bottom, and that uh, I believe is on the ground, and just is like a ditch, and that's 18 by 18. And if you add up all the inches, it uh, comes to 1260 inches, or 105 feet, based on a 21 inch cubit in this instance and the total is uh, 60 cubits. We also have this here number, if you look uh, later on, in the, or earlier on in the vision of this here temple, it talks about these here gates, and there's six gates, there's three outer gates, east, west, and north, and then there's three inner gates, and they all have the same dimensions, they are all uh, three score cubits, so that would be uh, 60 cubits each. So in height, each of them is 1,260 inches. And there's uh, six, six of them gates. And um, the roof of them is, is 25 cubits, which equates to uh, 1,050 inches, which seems to maybe connect to this here, 105 feet, with a similar number. And 105, you can maybe see that as like a symbol of the 10th day of the 5th month. So Ezekiel, his last day, lying on his left side. So he lies, lies on his left side for 390 days, and then 40 days on his right side. And the last day of his 390th time was the 10th day of the 5th month, in 591 BC. And then he has a prophecy a year later, in 590, on the 10th day of the 5th month. And he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem that's going to be taking place four years later, in 586. Also, on the 10th day of the 5th month, or more specifically, the temple's destroyed in that day. And then it's going to be 655 years later, when, on the same day, Rome is going to destroy the, the temple in 70 AD. So there we have 105 10th day of the 5th month, pretty much a uh, repeated pattern in that diagram. Just another point in connection with this here date, that uh, 590. So this is Ezekiel's vision in, uh, in chapters 20 to 23. And so we find that date in Ezekiel 20 verse 1. And in Ezekiel 21 verses 26 to 27, we, we have this here, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem, take off the crown, this shall not be the same, exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more, until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. So the diadem is going to be removed from Zedekiah in 586 BC. And this was four years uh, later from this year prophecy that is given in Ezekiel 21. But it's going to be given to him whose right it is uh, in 4 BC concerning the birth of Christ. And that's going to be 586 years later. So you have 586 years as a span, and it connects with the date. And then you have four years as a span, which connects to the birth of Christ in 4 BC. And Ellen White, on commentating on Ezekiel 21, verses 26 to 27, says, These words were nearly, sorry, these words were written nearly 600 years before the. the before Christ's first advent. So she's connecting the date 
when that was written, and then to when it's being fulfilled in the birth of Christ. So I've just seen that 600 years, and I was just thought, okay, she's saying nearly 600 years. How, what's that exactly? So I found out that it was exactly 586 years, and then I sort of pieced together this here um, date and span um, correlation in this diagram, just based on what Ellen White was saying there, kind of inspired me to look into this. So we had uh, studied the altar that we find in uh, Ezekiel chapter 43 and this here just wondering uh, so there, there's that diagram I have here just a sort of explanation of it in a bit more detail this would be the size of a man in connection to the the size of the altar, and um, that's, this here would be the uh, the half inch, half cubit, extra dimension, which would make, I believe, this here area from here to here, so round about, to be nearer uh, 70 square cubits, and there, therefore, you, that would connect with 70 AD. And the area of this area, <coughs> the top area, <coughs> excuse me, the, the older area, the top, is um, 144. The area of the top area of the, the greater settle is uh, 294. And the area of the lower settle is... Uh, what was it? 256, I think it was. If you add all them up, it takes you to 596, which connects to the Gregorian date that Ezekiel uh, begins, relates to as his, um, the years that he's counting. So this is just the, the each area here. So that would be the older, the greater settle, and the lower area. And if you add them all up with the bottom, so that, that comes to 596. And then we have the bottom here, 664, if you add this here, area here. And then I'm saying with that span, it just needs to be 1 34th of a cubit extra, which is basically like a thumbnail, which would bring that to 70. And then you would give us the number 666. I just think it's, it's not there... Um, uh, explicitly, but I, I believe it's just so close that I, I think we can, uh, <laughs> I'm inspired to sort of say that it, it does connect to that 666 years that is, Ezekiel is uh, pointing to. Just some other numbers there. Um, the perimeter equates to, of each, if you add up all the perimeters, so it comes to f uh, 5,040 inches, which is 2520 times 2. Um, and the volume, we looked at that. The, the, the volume of the first three top areas, the older, the greater settle, and the lower settle is 1872. And the, the bottom area is 68. And uh, the total area is uh, 1940. I just had in mind maybe connecting that to around the time of the World War II. We had the Holocaust, and the Holocaust, another name for it, well, the, the English name for it is a, a burnt offering, so it connects to, to an altar. And we also have in Ezekiel the number 666 in, the, in date form. We have in Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1, a vision that uh, Ezekiel has on the sixth year and the sixth month and the fifth day of the month. He sat in the house with the elders of Judah, sat before him, and the hand of the Lord fell there upon him. So Jeff has connected this to, to happening just before the Sunday law. 
So you have 665, if you sort of see these here, sixth month, sixth, sixth year, sixth month, fifth day. It's just one day short of 666 in a sense. That vision, he actually carries it over into the next day. So he does yes. get to the sixth day, the sixth month, or the sixth year. Yes. Yeah, yeah so um, that was actually, the vision occurred on the Sabbath, the 7th of September, 591. And this is uh, the 23rd day of Ezekiel lying on his right side, bearing the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. And he's going to continue another 17 days. It's just interesting, if you multiply 23 by 17, it gives you the number 391, which was kind of relating to his previous vision on the fifth day of the fourth month in chapter 4, where there's uh, 390 years to the siege, and then you have the siege lasting another year and a half anyway after that. Um, also connects to the, the years of the reigns of the kings. And then when you do come to uh, chapter 12, as, he, as Theodore was bringing to our knowledge, it uh, talks about him. He he's really has a vision here. He's taken to Jerusalem in chapters 8 to chapter 11. And then he, he's really back in Babylon, Babylon in reality. In the sense, after that, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see, and they see not, and they have ears to hear, and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. So Ezekiel has retold that which he had been imparted in previous chapters 2 and 3. And then it says, Therefore, son, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight, and it shall be that they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. So Ezekiel's now doing acts in reality, while in chapters 8 to 11, they transpired in vision. And he's going to move his stuff and dig through the wall and so forth there. And then in verse 6 it says, In, the sight, in their sight shall thou hear it, so, sorry, shall thou bear it upon thy shoulders and carry it forth in the twilight? So there's now twilight's going to be moving into the next day, so that will be the sixth, hundred, sixth year, sixth month, sixth day. As a, so that would be Sunday, the 8th of December, and then he uh, carries out the stuff. And this is relating to what transpired uh, about four years later. Uh, it's relating to Zedekiah, that he would then, in his 11th year, sort of at twilight, in the middle of the night or whatever, he would uh, seek to escape Jerusalem from the Chaldeans that were coming around it. So um, just want, I was just like finishing off from yesterday's study. And I just want to now just briefly give a an overlaps of God's dealing throughout history relating, relating to chronology. So I'll just say uh, So in, in 1656, or sorry, well, well that's when Usher died, but his name, we had related it to the span of 1656 years from creation. And uh, I was checking the uh, calendar converter, and on the first day of the uh, seventh month in 4046 is uh, actually a, a Sabbath. But that would uh, wouldn't that, would that be beginning on the Friday, then? At sunset. Would that be then? Would you be counting out from sunset on the Sabbath? Then, sort of, you would have the the first seven days then, so that would sort of connect with that. 
the first day of seventh month. Yeah, so, so we don't know when, what date creation occurred. Asher had used the fall, the first day of the seventh month in 4004 BC. The sunset was on October 22. Um, so it obviously is a symbol even though he was incorrect. But so we, we put it in 4046, but we don't know where mm -hmm. it begins. But if you use the first day of the seventh month, yeah, it would be... Um, you're saying that, that the date there that it gives is the Sabbath for that date? Yes. Okay, so then, yeah, that would begin, the Sabbath would begin Friday, sunset, the day mm -hmm. before. Right, that's mm -hmm. what you're asking. Yeah, so really, the second day of the seventh month would maybe then be a Sunday then. Mm -hmm. It would be identified. Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. So in this year history, we have God identifying a warning Actually, I, 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 even though you look at the calendar converter, it's, it's um, when it's dealing with dates in that history, it's a little bit more complicated because that one is using the first visible crescent, and it's also the calendar converter is defaulting to uh, 3029, 3029, 3029 for the first six months. But that's not the case prior to 1533 B.C., so uh, I usually, we just have never updated the calendar converter because it's, it's not a simple formula, formula. You have to do a, a lot more complicated math for the program to run that. So I usually look at those things. So I, I can just take a look and see if I can refine that date when the first day of the seventh month is in mm -hmm. 4046 based on how the calendar mm -hmm. would work in that time. Mm -hmm. That's Of so. course, we didn't have the moon really until the, the fourth day so, uh, yeah and that's okay. why it's really um but the full moon um is going to be how they do it prior to then so their full for, the full moon is going to be on the 15th and and so they're not using the first visible crescent in that history and one is because they're a lot more intelligent than us and they can figure these things out when the month is but later it was just the first visible crescent so mm -hmm. but yeah so i'm just going to take a look at it and see Okay, thanks. So in this year history, the first 1656 years, uh, God gave, was involved in chronology, and he gave 120 years as a period there relating to when something would occur at a specific time. And he had Noah build the ark. Uh, he also had Methuselah. Now, we didn't know when, there was no sort of set date, just it was like a sign. When he dies, then you, you know then the flood's going to come. And his years is, can be related, and so, well, divided up into 187 years from when he then begat Lamech, who lived for 777 years, and then he continued 782 years. So even within that there, you have 1872, and you have the 78 sort of here, like MERD, within that, in that structure. Um, so after the flood, we had a 400-year period given to Abram, which led to the, at the Exodus. So sort of towards the end of that period, there was a possibility that the Israelites could have been aware that they were approaching. If they knew how to, when it began, what it was relating to, they could have had some idea that, okay, this is, God's going to be coming. This is nearly the end of these 400 years. Um, so, but we're not too sure. We're not given any, any information. But there was 40 years then given for the wandering in the wilderness. So those who were under 19 years of age at this year time, as well as Joshua and Caleb, they very much knew of this year date, and they were look, looking forward to it and saying, this is when we're going to go in um, to the promised land. There's other dates then, we're told, but this is kind of looking back in time. So Jephthah is aware of 300 years 
after this here date. He's, so he's, he's dating that. He's aware. He's aware of the chronology there until his time. Uh, the building of the temple. They're aware of that time going to there as well. And uh, in 977 BC, we have a, chronology, uh, a prophecy concerning Josiah, but there's no dates connected with it. We don't really understand how long that's going to be, but you have uh, a prophecy concerning Josiah. And I suppose for those living in the time of Josiah, when he was king, they could have been aware, okay, this year prophecy is going to be fulfilled around this year time. Uh, we had, previous to Josiah, Elijah given a prophecy that the land would not see any dew or rain, but there was no real forecast of how long that was going to be taken. Now afterwards we understand it was three and a half years. And in 742, we had a prophecy concerning 65 years that the land would be forsaken of both their kings and Ephraim would be broken. And uh, this is something that they could have been aware of then. That they could have worked out from that their time then when that would occur. Hezekiah was given an extra 15 years or 5,400 days um, of life after he was healed. So there was some knowledge of chronology there with him. And then we had that fulfillment of Josiah in 627. In 607, there was a fulfillment of 490 years for the land didn't rest. God was very much aware of that, but I don't think, uh, other than maybe some, some of his prophets, I don't think there's any evidence of anyone working that out. But then we have, in 592, we have Ezekiel talking about these 390 years to the siege which uh, people could have then worked out when that siege was going to take place. So it took place in, in, in 587. And 390 years back took us to the division of the kingdom. And Ezekiel here is in 592, given this here prophecy, which takes place about four and a half years or so after um, he gave that prophecy. So... God has sort of given these here dates in the future which uh, could, could be worked out to some level by some of the people. And there was a prophecy in Jeremiah 28 verse 15 to 17 concerning Hananiah that he would die in that particular same year. And he died in the seventh month. And um, just going back to these here, 1,566 years. So I should have had it mentioned this earlier, but I put it in the wrong slide order. That date, it's, it's correct. All right, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so we had from creation period of 1,656 years until the flood, or we could say a shut door. Oh, and then there's uh, seven days to the flood. And we can mark the seven days of creation at the beginning of that. Now, for a period from 1798 to 1844, as we understand that's a period of 46 years, or we could say in prophetic terms, 46 times 360 to get the number of days. And that's uh, 1,656 times with an extra zero, I think 16,560. So it sort of connects with us here, 1,656. And there 
In 1844, we have a shut door with uh, Christ entering into the most holy place and shutting the door of the holy place. So one door is open, one door is shut. And after this here, the seventh-day Sabbath becomes the testing truth. The third angel's message arrives. And previous to 1798, there was uh, the, seven, the seven times of Leviticus, uh, chapter 26, applied uh, to higher medicine. That began in 723. But as well as that, uh, we can also add another 1656. So from the midnight cry on the 15th of August to the 22nd of October is a period of 69 days. And if you multiply that by 24 to get the number of hours, it's 1656 hours. So there's two witnesses there of 1656 going to the shut door in 1844, paralleling the 15, 1656 years to the shut door in the seven days of the flood. So um, I'll just... So from um, after the destruction of Jerusalem in 586, we had these here prophecies given uh, to, by Daniel. We also had the seven years, the seven times in Nebuchadnezzar. I put there 569. We're not too sure, no, not too no, uh, sure um, exactly. But there's a period there towards the end of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, certainly before he died in 561. BC. So I'm not saying it ends there, it could end sometime just before that. Um, yeah, so, so just question mark there. So there was a, a time period of prophecy that God is going to say this is going to take seven years. And then. You know, one thing about that period, Ellen White talks about um, Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. and that he actually sees this period. Yes. Um, and she talks about how old he is when he comes to the throne. And so definitely it, for him to have seen the beginning of it and have a memory of it, it, it must have happened very close to the end of his reign. So he would have been restored to his throne after that period of madness, but shortly after he would have died. Mm -hmm. And then Evo Merodach uh, becomes king in in March of 561. So it, it could have been in 561 just at near the beginning of the year. Could have been late 562. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So Daniel here, or in this year time period, is going to be given all these here time prophecies uh, applying to the future. That's going to be worked out uh, by William Miller and um, sort of gives a witness also to the, the birth of Christ or the crucifixion of Christ and when he comes to minister. In 539 you had Babylon coming to an end. There was, that was the completion of 70 years so that could have been worked out. You had a, seven, in 520 you had a mention of 70 years towards the temple sort of come, coming to a completion being built around that time. And then in 457, we had the commencements of the 70 weeks. And so people could have been aware of when the walls and streets of Jerusalem were going to be built within a jubilee period after that. And then there's no real time prophecies until the birth of John and Christ 
you had the Magi then studying the chronology. They would have been looking at these here, this year's 70-week prophecy. And understanding it's near the time now Christ is born in 4 BC. So they, they could have been working well. He's going to be anointed after 30 years. Maybe they could have worked back then, these here, uh, 70 weeks come to this point. But he's going to be maybe born here and then anointed at that particular time. So they were certainly aware, aware of the 70 week prophecy. And then when Christ came in 27 AD, he says the time is fulfilled, relating to the 483 years of the 70 weeks. And then he was crucified in the midst, so that would have been 486.5 years into that prophecy. And then you had the closed probation in 34 AD. So God's people, if they were tuned in, they would have been aware of these things. You had in the period of the early church, the Thessalonians, anticipating the coming of Christ quite soon. And Paul had the correct understanding. In AD 66, you had the signs of the Roman standard outside Jerusalem. And then when that withdrew, God's people fled to Pella. But um, there's no real chronology uh, connected with that. Maybe they, were, they may have been aware of. They're just looking for things which, which were taking place. And then towards the end of the first century, you had John give to 1260, 150 years, 391 years and 15 day prophecies uh, relating to Islam. And also he has, like I mentioned there, three and a half days around the, the period of the, the French Revolution, which equates to about three and a half years. So there was time prophecies given then. And then you had some uh, early church fathers, whatever they call them, um, doing their chronology around the, the early centuries of the Christian church. Uh, Africanus, he anticipated the 6,000 years ending in 500 AD. And Eusebius, <clears throat> he was anticipating the 6,000 years ending in, in 800 AD, uh, which was the, the year Charlemagne was uh, crowned by the Pope. Um, the, he was uh, the head of the King of the Holy Roman Emperor. And interestingly, also in that date, you had Isaac Newton calculating 1260 years to 2060. So, and then, uh, but Bede, prior to that time, had estimated that Christ was born about 4,000 years uh, before from the creation of the world. And then we discussed Usher in 1656. He died, but his um, chronology was among the most detailed at that their time, and I believe God had led him to identify certain dates, which was going to be picked up by William Miller. And William Miller was born in 1782. So just another interesting point from 1656 to 1782 is... 16. Oh, 1782. Yes. Yes. Which is, I thought was interesting. So, um, Miller, he's going to be born on the 15th of February. And then the Pope's going to be taken captive in 1798. On the 15th of February also. Which is the, the birthday of William Miller. So he was 16 years old. And then we're going to see God leading him into an understanding of the 2520, the 2300 years, the 1260, the 1290, the 1335s. And uh, he also calculates the Great Jubilee, 2450 years. So the 1290 ends here, 1260 ends there. But the other dates he was pointing to the year 1843. Um, but he comes to understand this year 
from a period from 1816 to 1818, which is 18 years later. So I thought that was interesting. You have a sense of mirror, 18 years as a span, six, 16, sorry, 16 years the span, 18 years the span, to 1816, when he begins to study prophecy. So you have like a type of yeah. a, a mirror. <laughs> with that. And then it's, it's going to be two years here. Cal doing these calculations. And then in 1838, you have Josiah Litch, and he's going to give an understanding for the 150 years and 381 years and 15 days of Revelation chapter 9. And that's going to be 20 years later from 1818. And then these were going to be uh, connected to the 381 years going to be fulfilled two years later in 1840. So you, even there, you can maybe even see like a some type of structure. Then um, snow was on the scene then in, in 1844. And through that, we're going to understand that Christ was crucified in 3180 in the midst of the week. So, so God in that there time period, there's a lot of chronology understanding explosion, exploding at that there time. But after 1844, it sort of peters out. We have 1856, we have Hara Medicine understanding the 2520 for northern Israel. And then in 1863, 64 even, just early, 64, whatever we have, the 2520 then being rejected. And we have really a dearth of uh, chronology understanding. We have Ellen White statements in that their time, but there's no real uh, sort of people putting together a chronology. We have Edwin Thiel trying to do his thing, and which is a uh, vandalism really to chronology. Um, we had uh, Lewis F. Weir in the 1950s. Not so much to do with chronology, but he was understanding uh, an understanding of when Daniel 11 verses 40 would be fulfilled. And then Jeff Peppinger was born around that their time as well. And then 1989 to 1991, we had the fall of the USSR, which was fulfillment of that. And then in 2005, we had the 2520s then come to an understanding as um, come back into. Well, in a sense, they've been expanded upon. They understand that they connect it to this year prophetic mirror. Uh, they connect it 19 years to the end, and then 19 years to 1863. So there was, a, again, this year time we have God bringing to light chronological understanding, again, which, which is going to be to the sort of same exploding level that we had from 1798 to uh, 1844, an understanding that, that history is going to be repeated, that in that history there was a lot of chronological understanding and developing, and so therefore if we're repeating that history, we're seeing a lot of chronological understanding developing as well. And around 2006, I'm not too sure exactly when, it could be 2007, the symbolic uh, meaning of numbers really took, uh, began to be understood. We understood that 46 years related to a temple. We had seen that in John chapter 2, but we calculated it to 46 years from 1798 to 1844. We understand that Moses was on Mount Sinai initially for six days, and then he was in, in the cloud for 40 days and 40 nights. And there he received the information related to the tabernacle which is a type of temple. And then our bodies, we have 46 chromosomes. 
and Paul says we are the temple of God. And then from 19, sorry, from 2013 to 2014, our, um, the understanding of chronology has really greatly increased. Uh, God has been leading us to see all these things that uh, Theodore and myself and Dwight have been sharing. So, there, that's mine. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, that's just like a, an overview of um, God involved with chronology uh, towards this, uh, up to this year time. So, um, any thoughts, questions before we close for prayer? What time is it? So, um, I mean, we had worked out some other things as well with Miller and uh, the Popes, right? So there was some detail in there, which you talked about before when the Pope was born December 25th, Pope Pius VI. And there's also connections then um, in that history with uh, the Lisbon earthquake, the dark day, the falling of the stars, and we could probably find a lot more structures. In in all, the thing about what you're doing is you're connecting things that are connected, right? Mm -hmm. So often, when I've looked at, um, you know, dispensationalist, futuristic ways of looking at dates, they will connect things that aren't really connected. It's just, and, and they don't connect in such precise ways as many of our things do. But somebody looking at this from the surface could say, well, I've seen things like this other people have done. The first thing I notice is that they connect things that aren't really connected. The second thing is that their dates are often wrong. Mm -hmm. So that people, in order to get biblical chronology, especially to fit some kind of pattern or preconceived idea, they have to reject reality and create some kind of structure but we have stuff that goes down not just to the uh, to the d year or even to the day but we have stuff that is precise to the hour right and, and even to the minute which is extremely unlikely to have occurred randomly so other people have tried these types of things and I always find it interesting to read what other people have done and how they try to connect things, but they have nothing like what we have. And so the correct chronology produces um, quite amazing things. There's even an old book that d notices some of these patterns, and some of the things in it are correct. I can't remember the name of the book, but I think it's called Palmoni um, from the early 1900s. 1863. What's, it, what's, yeah, 1863. Yeah, it's on the Palmoni website as well. Yeah, and it's, uh, it was what the the preface is written on June 9th, 1863, right? So we know I that June 9th in 2018 is the date that uh, time setting came into this movement. So, yeah, so pretty interesting uh, uh, things in that book, though because they don't have the correct chronology, uh, some of their stuff is, is doesn't really work, mm -hmm. but there are some ideas that do. Okay, thank you. And and thanks for doing these studies on on chronology. It's definitely helped for the the study of judges, but also for just understanding how all of these symbols work and the different types of things we do and the different tools we use. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, you're welcome. Um, um, I wanted to know about uh, the puzzle chronology maybe we don't know when it will happen uh, in the book heaven um, page 47 paragraph 2 when it talks about ascending to heaven seven days to the sea of earth um, maybe how do we connect it to this will it be the shark will there be a shark to some people then to some other people close at an open door 
Yeah, so the, the seven years ascending to the Sea of Grass. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Yeah, yeah. Seven days, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I don't hear. Yeah, so Ellen White says that we were seven days ascending to the Sea of Glass, referring to the 144,000. So in vision, yes, she's, exactly. she's shown that, that in vision, right? So it's not something that happened in reality. It's, it's in vision, and it's definitely symbolic. Now, some people have tried to attach that to there was silence in the, space of, in the heaven for the space of half an hour, but that's actually in 1844. And... So some people have tried to connect that because a half an hour in prophetic time is about seven and a half days, um, except that we recognize that that's the time when the high priest is going into the most holy place. That's the half an hour. And so that's referring to the time that we live in presently. But um, I know the seven days ascending to the sea of glass, we don't know when that is, but definitely it's a symbol. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, so some people have said that a lot of people haven't kept the Sabbath, but before they get to heaven, and then seven days ascending, they'll, they'll get to keep the Sabbath before they actually get to heaven, so that's been proposed okay. as uh, an understanding. But uh, let's, okay. we'll just close the prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the light you've been sharing. We ask for a character to be represented, representative of this here light, Father, that uh, we can develop a Christ-like character to, to share these here things and to um, make the world aware that you are the God that's over the time of history, that you've you're, you're bringing things to an end and you're revealing increasingly more of um, your glory as we approach your soon coming. And Father, we, uh, we ask it that you continue to bless this here movement, help us to be united and to do a work for you which is uh, worthy of the great love that you love us and that, um, that we can uh, warn this here world of your soon coming. And uh, we ask for traveling mercies for Dwight and for Jennifer as they travel back to Washington, and for Ram as he travels to Oregon. And um, your blessing upon Theodore as well as he presents for us uh, his final presentations um, that this, uh, for this year camp meeting. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>